question is? John, I know you said the other day there's no way to simulate this kind of environment. How do you feel the players handle it differently down the stretch uh, when Syracuse is applying all that pressure on you guys? You know, th there is no way. I mean, you're playing in front of 30, 31,000. I don't know what the number is. And so you can't simulate that. Um, you know, coming down the stretch, we did some good things. We did some things we have to do better. Um, we made our foul shots, you know, which, which, which was key. And so, um, you know, it wasn't as pretty as we wanted it to be, but I think our guys made enough plays. You know, Jesse had some big contests, some big rebounds, um, you know, that we needed down the stretch. So LJ made his foul shots. So there's someone like Reggie who, you know, hasn't played that much, but he had some really big plays during this game. And most people talk about Reggie and they think about him making shots. And But he was in there. He set a couple good screens, which got him a couple of shots. He, then he did hit a big shot. Um, some of the passes he threw, uh, you know, someone like that. I think you know, I'm, I'm rambling to say it was it was a team win. I mean, you look you can look at everybody who got in. They got in and they did their job. They got in and they contributed. Um, you know, everyone in that locker room helped. You were plus 10 on the boards in the second half. Was that something addressed at, at halftime? And if so, what, how was it addressed? Did I say anything at halftime? <laughs> um, I mean, I think it was halftime. It was every time out. I mean, one thing, one, one of their strengths every year, year in, year out, is second shots. I mean, they throw it up and they go get it. And I thought that we, you know, to, to win against Syracuse, you have to win the battle of the boards and limit their transition. And, and particularly in the second half, I thought we did a good job. They had a couple of breakaways, but when we made a mistake, usually against them, if you make a mistake on offense, it turns to an easy basket. And I thought the times we did have some hiccups on offense, we were able to get back and contain them most of the time. Can you talk about the significance of today's win, this kind of environment, a special day, honor and pearl, just you know, how big this win was for your program? But, I mean, whenever, whenever Georgetown wins in the Carrier Dome, it's a big win for the program. Um, uh, and, you know, but that's, that, that's you know, this, this rivalry, this, these two institutions, you know, have been going at, you talk about someone like Pearl, you know, and when you think about the Big East, you know, at its inception, you know, first and foremost, you think of Mr. Gavitt, Dave Gavitt, you know, but then, at least me, then you go to Patrick Ewing, Pearl, and Chris Mullen. Um, and so, uh, you know, I don't know, I was a little, you know, we, we come up and we play Georgetown, and it's, it's, it's let's celebrate Pearl weekend. I'm like, oh, geez, <laughs> like they needed some extra incentive um, um, to play. But, you know, he's someone, without a doubt, without a doubt, that's, that's one of the pillars of, of our conference. John, Andrew White is a, is a big time shooter for Syracuse. He came out, hit two threes, and then was relatively quiet. Was there uh, an added, I don't know, incentive defensively to, to shut him down if he cut off the head of the snake, so to speak? Well, I think uh, uh, LJ, you know, who who's playing at a high level right now, um, you know, PK, what, what's, what do you have? What's his numbers? 21 and 11. 23 and 11. 23 and 11. Um, but he's chasing Andrew White all day. And so, you know, a couple, or the first three, you know, he didn't trail him hard, tried to go up through the middle, he gets it off. I don't think LJ was on on the second one, but then he just, his, his laser sharp attentiveness on defense, I thought was, has been very good for a couple games now and was, was, was outstanding today. LJ, what are your thoughts on what contributed to the win today? Um, you obviously, you had a huge game, but just team wise, what was working for you to get more, where your focus is coming in today? Well, I just think we made the right plays to win, and we, we wanted it more, so we came out on top. What's it like coming to this kind of environment, you know, 26,000 people screaming, and how do you kind of stay, keep focused and block all that out? Well, we stayed together, and coach kept coming us down when they made the run, so we stayed in. Rodney, for you, what was it like coming in here to play, and, and it's kind of the same question. What did you do to kind of block out all that noise down the stretch? <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's a blessing to be able to come in here. Uh, and playing this type of atmosphere with a great group of guys, um, just we knew it was going to be just us in here. So every time I like Peak said, coach was calming us down. We were calming each other down, rallying together behind each other. How do you think you handled that in Syracuse's zone? I think we did a great job. We uh, stayed patient. We didn't really take any rush shots. Uh, moved the ball pretty well. When you share it, that's when you get good opportunities and good looks. So not taking bad looks gave us an opportunity to get back on defense. Also, I think so. Sharing the ball helped on our defensive end also. LJ, you guys have won five in a row. What's kind of been the difference? What's been working the last five games in particular, what do you think? I would say practice. We had more time to work on us, so, and Coach pushing us real hard, and we just listening. <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? One question. Thanks, here. I'm curious to know in all the games you've coached, where do you see the Pearl Washington impact the most? 
In the games that I've coached? Yeah, just in, in college basketball, I mean, where do you see his impact? You know, stylistically, you know, what reminds you of his game? You know, Ooh, that's one of those questions you got to give me a minute to, <laughs> to, 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 to smoke it over and think about it a little bit. Um, you know, I think you go through every generation, every era, and, and Pearl's one of those guys. You know, I talk about how he helped to shape this league. You know, I talk about him, Patrick, and Chris. Um, you know, he's one of those guys that the group behind him, you know, all the little kids at the playground trying to do what Pearl did. And the group behind him is watching, you know, you know working on their handles. Uh, you know, because you look at someone who, he was fast with the ball, but, you know, you wouldn't necessarily say he was a, a super uber athlete, but got to where he wanted to go whenever he wanted to get there, regardless of who or how many were in front of him. And so, you know, just the next generation is just working on being that guy. Thank you. Thank you.